The blowing of the seventh trumpet. In the past few decades, several small groups, devoutly following the leadership of some would-be prophet, abandoned their jobs and professions, sold all their worldly goods, and confidently awaited a precise moment when either the rapture would occur, or Jesus Christ would return. All such predictions failed, of course. The teaching that the second coming of Christ is one singular event limited to a specific date in the future, when Jesus Christ will descend from heaven in a body of flesh, has given rise to innumerable speculations, predictions, calculations, prophecies and projected dates concerning when this stupendous event is supposed to transpire. Put away your charts and timetables and calculations and it's, O ye saints of God! For they have all failed miserably and none will ever be right. Thank God that he delivers us from all this fantastic nonsense and in its place he directs our attention to what he is doing, yes, that which he is becoming and fulfilling in his elect. We look, indeed, for his glorious appearing, and rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory wherein he has appeared unto us, and in the glory in which he shall yet appear in surpassing splendor, praise his wonderful name. J. Preston E.B. In the book of Revelation, the city of Jerusalem, its temple, and the Roman Empire, all of which, in their own order, are prophesied to be destroyed. In 70 A.D., the Romans leveled Jerusalem and the temple, as we know from history. In my view, Revelation is showing primarily the spiritual realities that were the driving forces behind the soon coming events of AD 64 through 70 and a few decades ahead following. So an early date for Revelation for the reading of the book of Revelation is best suited for the nature and object of the apocalypse and facilitates its historical understanding. Jesus Christ pointed in his eschatological discourses to the destruction of Jerusalem and the preceding tribulation as the great crisis in the history of the theocracy and the type of the judgment of the world, and there never was a more alarming state of society. The episodes of persecution against Christians, carried out primarily by Jews, the tribulation of the six years preceding the destruction of Jerusalem, the consuming fire that lasted six days in Rome, and the infernal spectacle of the Neronian persecution behind him, extended over the whole Roman Empire. It was at this unique juncture in the history of mankind that John received those wonderful visions of the impending conflicts and final triumphs of the Christian Church. The terrors of the Jewish war and the Roman interregnum around him embraced wars and rebellions, frequent and unusual conflagrations, earthquakes and famines and plagues, and all sorts of public calamities and mysteries untold. It seemed, indeed, that the world, shaken to its very center, was coming to a close and every Christian must have felt that the prophecies of Jesus Christ were being fulfilled before his eyes. This was truly a book of the times and for the times. According to the authors of the Tara calendar, John wrote Revelation in 64 CE. Nero was the last Roman emperor of the Julio-Claudian dynasty and reigned from 54 to 68 CE. Hence Nero was the emperor under whom John suffered and wrote. Having said that, of course I realize that my understandings may not be correct. According to Paul's words, for Christians, 
there was but one standard by which to measure all claims on their religious allegiance, confession that the man Christ Jesus was the Word. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to determine if they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now the following are excerpts from the article, The Seventh Trumpet, by Jeff Carter. The book of the Revelation is not about the end of time, but about the time of the end. Not the last days of the world, but the last days of a temporary system, a temporary covenant that has given way to a new and better covenant. The temple in Jerusalem was the focal point of the old covenant system. The people went up to the temple to offer their sacrifices there because even though no building made by men could contain him, God was thought to reside there within the most holy place, the Holy of Holies. The temple with its altar and regular sacrifices was the symbol of the sacrificial system. But not everyone could enter the temple. The temple in Jerusalem was built with a series of concentric areas. The outermost court could be entered by everyone, but only Jews could proceed further. There was a sign posted at the gates to the next warning that to bring a Gentile any further was a capital offense. The Apostle Paul was arrested in Jerusalem on the accusation that he had brought Greeks into the temple area. But the Gospel of the Kingdom taught no division. As Paul said, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ like a garment. There is no Jew or Greek, slave or free, male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, heirs according to the promise. So those old divisions of the old covenant were going away. To the Gentile converts in Ephesus, he also said, So then, remember that at one time you were Gentiles in the flesh, called the uncircumcised by those called the circumcised which is done in the flesh by human hands at that time you were without the messiah excluded from the citizenship of israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without god in the world under the old system the jews were considered god's chosen people they were set apart as a kingdom of priests so as to demonstrate to the world the ideals of the kingdom of God. They were the depository and conservators of knowledge of the living God on earth. But that knowledge and that kingdom was no longer exclusive to the Jews. This was the mystery of God, the mystery of Christ that the Gentiles were now welcomed and made a part of the kingdom of God. Paul defines the mystery of God that was foretold by the prophets as Jew and Gentile and equality in Christ. That the Gentiles were fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. This was the grand purpose of God before the foundation of the world. The mystery of God would be realized when the seventh trumpet sounded. The time of waiting is over. At the time when the seventh angel is here sounding his trumpet, the mystery of God will be fulfilled just as he announced in the gospel to his servants the prophets. But in the days of the sound of the seventh angel, when he will blow his trumpet, then God's hidden plan will be completed, as he announced to his servants the prophets. And the seventh angel sounded. And there arose loud voices in heaven, saying, 
The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. The twenty-four elders, who were seated before God on their thrones, fell face down and worshipped God, saying, We thank you, Lord God, the Almighty, who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, but your wrath has come. The time has come for the dead to be judged and to give the reward to your servants the prophets, to the saints, and to those who fear your name, both small and great, and the time has come to destroy those who destroy the earth. God's sanctuary in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant appeared in his sanctuary. There were flashes of lightning, rumblings of thunder, an earthquake, and severe hail. Here in John's vision we have the Son of Man coming in the glory of the Father with angels, and bringing repayment to all for what they had done. Both reward for the saints and destruction for the destroyers. John saw heaven opened up and the true temple revealed. And within the temple he saw the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark was the war palladium of Yahweh the God of hosts. It was the war standard which was carried into battle and which threw Israel's enemies into panic. Whenever the Ark set out, Moses said, Arise, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered, and those who hate you flee from your presence. When it came to rest, he would say, Return, Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. The ark preceded the warriors into battle. John's vision of it here signals that a battle is about to take place. The rest of the revelation given to John shows that that battle was coming against Jerusalem. This was the seventh trumpet. But the song we sometimes sing got it all wrong. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks, eternal, bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. The destruction of Jerusalem by the Roman armies was similar to the destruction of Israel by the Assyrians and the destruction of Judah by the Babylonians. These armies were used by God as the rod of his wrath for the violation of his covenant with Israel. Since they had rejected the Christ and the new covenant made in his blood their city was brought down in punishment. But even more than that, the new covenant made in Jesus Christ's blood had superseded the old covenant made with the blood of bulls, sheep, and goats. The new covenant with Jesus Christ as the high priest had superseded the old covenant with a descendant of Aaron as the human high priest. The new covenant opened the heavenly temple, the true temple, to all of mankind. Whereas the Old Covenant Temple had been made by human hands and restricted entrance to a select few. So time wasn't over, except for the Old Covenant system. The mystery of God was revealed at the blowing of the seventh trumpet, the mystery that all would be welcomed into the kingdom of God without division between Jew and Gentile, without division between male and female. Jesus Christ does indeed rule now, and forever as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. To deny his kingdom is to deny our salvation and our acceptance into his kingdom. If he hasn't come a second time, with his angels in the glory of his Father to bring repayment, then the seventh trumpet hasn't sounded and the mystery of God has not been fulfilled. And if the mystery of God has not been fulfilled, we Gentiles are still the dogs outside the temple. 
To deny his kingship is to deny the fulfillment of the new covenant, and to be bound by the old covenantal system with its temple made by human hands and the requirement of regular sacrifices made by a human high priest. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. The twenty-four elders, who were seated before God on their thrones, fell face down and worshipped God, saying, We thank you, Lord God, the Almighty, who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. Amen.